from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Randwater has embarked on a three-pronged integrated program to clear the invasive water letters currently overwhelming the Val River, one part of which is the release of hundreds of weevils as biological agents across several sites across the barrage area. Natasha Wendell has a story. The water utility, after being approached by communities, had been working with Rhodes University and various technical experts to develop options to mitigate the increasing challenge of invasive plants in the Val Barrage. The result is a program that entails an integrated approach combining the physical removal, chemical control and the longer term biological agent control. The project came into being uh, due to the, the, the inundation of the water lettuce on, on the Val River Barrage and Randwater was approached by communities. Um, and uh, yes, then, then Randwater made the decision to get involved and, and to take the necessary steps uh, to address the water lettuce. The water lettuce, the, the extent of the growth, uh, from what I'm told, has not been seen anywhere else in South Africa to date. Um, and so the extent of the problem is, is almost a new facet uh, to try and deal with. Um, added to that, we don't only have water lettuce, we obviously have the water hyacinth as well. Um, and so one needs to take uh, a broader view of it to say how we're going to approach this. And, and our approach has been that, as my boss said, we will, we will do an integrated approach to dealing with this, which will involve physical removal, um, it will involve chemical control, and it will involve the biological control. The physical removal um, has already been alluded to, that the community, and thank you to you for, for getting in and stepping in and, and doing a huge amount of work already. Uh, the amount of tons that you've removed is, is incredible. Um, unfortunately, the weather and, and uh, the water quality hasn't helped, so the, the growth has, has continued unabated. Um, the chemical control um, has been specially formulated for this type of, of, of work, um, and again has been approved by the uh, Department of uh, Forestry, Fisheries and Environment, as well as uh, the Department of Water and Sanitation. Uh, and approved for us to be able to use at very, very specific dosage rates with uh, a specific formulation that we had to put together for use. Um, and the spraying on the water lettuce has been literally just on the water lettuce because again, the community came together, uh, pulled the water lettuce together into, into large mats so that there wasn't open water and unnecessary open water and, and it was applied accordingly and it was applied um, accurately uh, as, as required um, and again we had the necessary qualified people on site with PCO licenses etc to, to undertake that um, and then the, the other side of it is the biological control to implement the biological control we are working very closely with, with Rhodes University um, and they are assisting us uh, with their, their technical knowledge and their expertise while biological agents such as the weevils and the hoppers can control the majority of these invasive floating species over the long term, there is a need to get rid of a large majority of these plants as quickly as possible, which is where the manual removal or the chemical treatment play a significant role to prevent further spread. Water lettuce can be controlled biologically. The reason why it's flared up on the vol is a combination of all kinds of factors. It's um, water quality, it's heat, it's um, well, actually, those are probably the two, the two main ones. Um, and if you think about any population or any, um, if you think of, an, of a species arriving in a, in a foreign habitat or in, a, in an un, unknown land, it sort of a, arrives in very small populations. And it takes a while, but it's there and it's getting used to things. And it gradually, um, the population starts to grow. And then when everything's right, it just goes, thanks very much, boom. And that's essentially what we've seen over this last um, summer season. And so we really have to get these control agents out there. As Dr. Hoy said, this is part of an integrated approach. Um, we know that the, we could just say, everybody, hold on to your horses, buy a control, we'll solve this, but it takes time. And we live in a world of instant gratification. We live in a world where if we have a lot of money, we want to see the problem solved. And so there is a need to get rid of a large majority 
the larger majority of these plants as, as quickly as possible, and that's not biological control. So that's where the manual removal, where the chemical removal comes in, and then the, the biological control is the long-term, sustainable, environmentally friendly option, and that's what we're looking at doing. And as Leslie, Dr. Hoy alluded, um, these plants die back in winter, so they come from the Amazon, they come from nice warm tropical temperatures, arrive here, the high felt is not a very friendly place with these types of plants, and so they, they really take a knock in winter, they get frosted over, and um, it looks like they've died, but that base, the crown of the plant, stays alive. So if you think of that um, water interface, it doesn't go below zero. So it's a nice buffered environment for the crown of that plant. And um, as soon as springtime comes, the plant grows back and the insect populations have taken a knock. And so our main goal, which is what we did at Hodapiers Port Dam, and we are seeing the benefits of that, is to rear as many insects as possible over winter, so that as soon as these plants start to poke their heads up from plants, that didn't die during winter, and also from seeds. So these plants um, produce thousands of seeds, they remain viable for a very long time, and as soon as they come back in summertime, then we have to get those insects out there as, as quickly as possible, and we have to get as many as possible, and we have to do it as frequently as possible. And in that way, we can knock the populations and keep them, um, keep them down. Released onto the aquatic plants, the biological agents eat on and damage the plants, which eventually kills them off. And while it does take time and requires patience, their long-term use on the invasive plants are said to be safe, environment-friendly and sustainable, reducing the need for chemical control. The program will be ongoing with the release of biological agents every few weeks, with the insects being reared in Grahamstown and at the newly established hothouse within Randwater's nursery in Alberton for further releases. Going forward, even, even at the moment, we will be liaising with roads and as soon as they have sufficient stock, we will, we will be introducing again in a few weeks' time. So um, that, is, that is what we're trying to do. It will be a sustained approach and this will be ongoing, as, as we said, this will be uh, ongoing for years. And, and in a few years' time, if another aquatic weed uh, introduces itself into into the barrage and there are biocontrol agents we will then hopefully proactively be able to identify it and and be able to 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 introduce those biocontrol agents as well on an on an ongoing basis so spring will be a big release and then we will we will on I'm, I'm saying a monthly basis but it may not be a monthly basis but it'll be a, a you know a regular basis thereafter throughout the summer uh, be introducing uh, weevils um, on, on, onto various portions yeah. of, of the Val Barrage because at the moment today we're releasing at four sites but we will be releasing onto other sites uh, into the future to try and um, get the weevils uh, established throughout the system because that is the aim. The other thing is that, that if you manage to control and eradicate in one area those weevils will die out. So we need to, you know, if there's new we, uh, water lettuce that move back into that area somehow through water drift or whatever it is, we need to reintroduce uh, weevils, which is why it's, it's, it has to be a sustained approach. Rhodes University has also developed a monitoring application for the project, which provides satellite imagery that gets uploaded and updated once a week, enabling Rand Water and other interested stakeholders to monitor the extent of the growth of the water lettuce, the extent of the problem, and to see where it has had impact. We need to do it correctly, we need to do it properly, we need to make sure that we get the right data, we get the right information, um, so that we can learn from this, because this is, the Val Barrage is one situation. There are many situations around the country, and hopefully if we can support other areas in the country with data, with information, with pitfalls, because there will be pitfalls in, in you know, there, there will be things that go wrong. If we can learn from all of that going into the future and advise other people, why not? I, I, it, it'll be for the betterment of the country. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.